my file on silent. Hello, I believe we're live. Welcome to the business of property Facebook, Facebook country. <laughs> and we have uh, Darren Younger from Bricklet and on the business of property with us. This is really exciting stuff. Give me a moment. I'm going to have a look at as technology goes so that I can see all the fantastic comments that are coming through. Um, and please, anyone that's watching, uh, feel free to put this on a watch party so you can share far and wide. Um, Darren is here today, uh, who is the CEO of Bricklet, which is a brand new uh, game-changing fragmented property ownership platform. So if you haven't heard of Bricklet, you're hearing it for the first time today, which is really, really cool. Um, Darren is no stranger to the technology and startup space i believe how many how many startups have you been involved in darren uh about four or five now oh Jesus, <laughs> just a casual four or five just just like as many children as you have <laughs> um that, and that's fantastic so you're uh you know i'd like to talk to you a, a bit about obviously the background of brick your background and how the whole bricklet idea came about and i'm sure we have lots of different comments from um our, our community here, we've got a community of, of very active investors and property developers. Um, so to have something like this, where they're like, what do you mean we can own, you know, pieces of property brick by brick? What does, what does that mean? And what does that mean as well to possibly property development? Um, so uh, what I'll do is I will read through any sort of comments that we have along the way. I'm sure there'll be lots of questions there, but you know, to start off with, um, I guess, tell us a little bit about your, so your sort of background and, and how Bricklet came about. Yeah, sure. Um, I guess to, um, to start with, just give a little bit of background. So yeah, I mean, I've been involved with technology for quite a number of years. And um, just recently, we're working with um, a number of people, talking to people in the office and about, you know, how hard it is to get into the property market with the prices up. Um, you know, it's getting really, really hard for people to market. And, you know, started to think about, started to see different um, platforms enter the market around, you know, ways to, to invest um, indirectly into property through funds and through unit trusts and things and thought, well, you know, maybe there's a way that we can actually invest, um, you know, can we cut up properties into smaller pieces to enable investment property um, that's, that's actually on title. And so started to explore that. And, um, you know, everyone that I sort of spoke to loved the idea. And so what came out of that was, you know, just kind of exploring it, spoke to a number of the land titles officers and a number of legal people and property developers and to understand the whole ecosystem, how the whole thing worked and started to come up with a way that we could actually um, turn a property into, cut it into smaller pieces to be able to sell it off. So we call this property fragmentation. So we turn it, you know, we're cutting it up into fragments. The opportunity uh, started to get a little bit more interesting the more traction we got, more people were getting very interested in it. And so then we took it a bit more serious and, and um, got it to a point where we came up with the structure that enables that to work. Um, and to give a really simple example, um, if you take a, an investment property, let's say take an apartment as a simple concept, say there's an apartment that's worth $500,000. So instead of selling it for $500,000 on the market uh, as a full apartment, what we can do is we can fragmentize it. So we can chuck it into uh, 20 fragments, which we call bricklets. And those fragments are, $25,000 each. So for a $25,000 piece, you own that piece of the apartment. You also get the rental, so the net rent every month. Mm -hmm. And you also receive um, anything, you know, not only do you own the, the property, but you also have got no hassle because with Bricklet, you're also a passive investor. So one of the other big challenges that we wanted to solve was being a landlord is can be you know a bit of a hassle so can we solve that as well so 
Uh, so what we do with that is we, we bring in an asset manager who manages the property on the behalf of the bricklet holders. So the bricklet holders, uh, but the two, the two main benefits as a landlord or as a bricklet holder, let's call it, is that one, you don't have any drama around having to make decisions or you're not going to have, um, you know, the, the property manager call you and say, you know, we've got this problem. Do we need to send a trade tradesman to fix it or anything like that? It's all managed by the asset manager. The other thing that's really exciting about it being a passive investment is that the, um, the, there's also no need to put money back into the platform. So uh, mm-hmm. we're standard as a standard landlord, one of the biggest concerns is, you know, do I have to continually put money in to, to cover the costs and, and, you know, kind of cash flows in, cash flows out. So with Bricklet, it's managed very differently. In fact, the, um, to the point where the asset manager manages that, that cash flow. And so any expenses that need to come out, they come out during the month and then they're reimbursed at the end of the month with the rent so that the Bricklet holders never have to actually put more money in. So once you own it, you're just getting the net rent every yeah, month right. as well. So uh, it's becoming, you know, it, it's it's really exciting. We launched a platform in December. We've had over $8 million worth of bricklets sold, over two, um, 250 bricklets, which has been very exciting, and wow. very exciting journey so far. And uh, a lot of people are getting behind it. That's fantastic. So how long was it in the making? Uh, it was about 18 months before that. So we started off with a few different ideas, spoke to a number of uh, number of organisations. Um, we spoke to the South Australian government was very, um, very helpful. Uh, they, I think they, they had a lot of interest because the Torrens Tidal, which is what it's built on, was invented in South Australia many, many okay. years ago. And this is seen as you know, the next evolution of that. And so they were very excited to help us in the early days. And, and we launched the first, um, the first pilot with them back in October last year, which was, which was great. Excellent. So you've got a few, few big backers in, uh, as part of the business as well, don't you? Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, we've been very fortunate to have Mervac and Stockland, both investors in the platform and both, yeah. um, you know, looking forward to putting some properties on the platform at some point soon. So we, we're really excited to have those guys as backers. And I mean, they see it as a, as a new channel to market. I mean, if you think mm. about, you know, um, being a developer, you know, the, the only option is that you can sell full price properties. So mm. to have the opportunity to, to sell those properties in smaller pieces to a different market adds mm. a lot of value. Um, one of the big um, draw cards of this and what really attracted me to what you're doing is, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm in the property development space and we're, we're funding things. And one of the things that, you know, um, that I've noticed for a while is that the normal, when I say normal, uh, the everyday mum and dad retail investor doesn't really have a lot of scope to invest um, in a huge portfolio. Um, and, and if they do that, they're, they're tied up, you know, they have to have a minimum of a hundred, you know, 150,000, um, and most investors have one or two properties and then they find that they've, they're really stuck. Um, this seems to be able to allow you to, if you had a hundred grand, well, you could potentially have a, a, a wide portfolio. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the two, the two main things that the Bricklet helps people with is one is that, um, that diversification. So, which is being very um, well received in the self-managed super fund world. So in, um, in SMSFs, so mm. that, that, that problem is actually um, solved quite well because a lot of people want to invest with property with their SMSF mm. and, you know, with a hundred grand or 200 grand, you can't buy much direct property. So with Bricklet, you could have, you know, a portfolio of property right across Australia with a hundred or 200 grand and, you know, still have that direct property portfolio so it is very valuable for that for that kind of market as well the other uh, I guess really exciting piece is you know we'll be announcing very soon that we've we're working with a number of finance companies around yeah. uh, financing bricklets so what that means is you know once we can start to leverage bricklets someone who's saved five or ten thousand dollars will be able to buy a fifty thousand dollar bricklet and yeah know, so right uh, so it means, you know, it's no different to the principles of saving up 100, 200 grand and buying a, buying a property, but it's on a much smaller scale and, and it allows people to, to move much faster. Yeah, so they can leverage like they would a normal investment property. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Wow, okay. 
Okay, so so is there are you finding um, the markets that are really drawn to it? Are, are they your um, you know you mentioned the self managed super, but I'm assuming also they, you know we've got a whole lot of millennials who have been told that they can't afford property. Yeah. Um, I saw a monopoly game that absolutely said that as well. You know, <laughs> let's face it, you can't afford to buy a house anyhow, um, yeah. and that's a little bit grim, but will this allow them you know is, is this something that that then allows them and opens up that market to say hey you 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 can yeah absolutely i mean it, it allows the millennials um anybody that's you know that's trying to get into the property market with a small amount of money will be able to enter the property market and what's really interesting is that we're seeing more and more uh trends like rent vesting which means you know i'm going to rent the place that i live in and I'm going to invest my, you know, I still want an investment property, but it's yeah. not going to be the home that I live in. So I'm uh, seeing more and more trends like that, that um, the Bricklet helps enable. So those um, millennials that have got, you know, 10, 20 grand saved up can, you know, buy into the property market and, you know, by using that leverage can, you know, start to really grow a portfolio very quickly. Yeah. Okay. So um, I know there are lots of questions here in terms of, you know, so does, does one come go into this as, is it a tenants in common type scenario? Yeah. So basically how it works is that all the, uh, all the bricklet owners are listed on title that uses tenants in common. Mm. So if you think about the platform being a, a very sophisticated way to manage the uh, the names or the, the the entities that are on title under that tenants in common model. Okay, all right. And so, what I'm trying to get my head around is, well, how do you get so many, and and what's the maximum number of bricklets that you can have, or or bricklet holders? The, 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 technically, there's no there's no limit. So it's more um, it's more about how to make it efficient enough to make it commercially possible. Okay. So if you think about if you had 20 people or 30 people that wanted to buy a property. Um, in the traditional method, each of them paying their own conveyance and, you know, doing everything that needed to be done in a manual process would be very expensive. So or the automation of the platform and the, and the, um, the integrations into platforms such as PEXA for the, uh, for mm. the integration into, you know, doing the, the land title transfers and things like that enables the platform to, um, to exist. Okay, so for people, I mean, what sort of um, properties are on the platform now that that uh, allow themselves to the bricklet ownership? Yeah, so the plat um, at the moment we've got um, the first properties are in uh, at the moment the ones that are left are in Sydney, um, and they are completed properties. We've just completed a development project as well, um, okay. the funding for that, which is really interesting. And so for the for the developer world, I think I'll save that one more for our part two conversation. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. We can go into depth about how we actually, um, how developers are starting to leverage the Bricklet platform to do the full end-to-end -end development. And it's, it, it starts to really open up um, the opportunity because it means that there's no more finance required for the for the developers, um, yeah. which is really exciting. But again, we can go into more detail on the um, on the next one for that. The um, the properties that are on there at the moment are completed properties and they are you know anywhere between kind of three three to four percent yield sydney based um where you know, there'll be some more melbourne based ones listed later this week should be by the end of the week and then there's also some um there's a big uh, backlog of queensland properties that'll be coming on very very soon as well Okay, and are these mainly sort of off the plan purchases, or the, or dif different stages of different stages? But all these, um, I mean, mainly the property is uh, is at a completed state. Um, mm. We did the first, um, the first de full development project just to see what the appetite was like, and, mm. and we sold um, that one out within within six weeks. So it was very, very yeah, good. right, okay, yeah, and so that that's the the question there around, you know, what, how quickly are these subscribed like you know fully subscribed um yeah and... it's very interesting like there's and there's different um there are different types of properties so i think there's two properties on there at the moment that are also ndis properties so yeah. um which changes the yield and obviously those that are in the property world would, would understand kind of what that means and so we're looking at all different types of property as well around how we can you know try and bring quality product that is, um, you know, good, good yield or, or good capital growth or, or gives that really good return over a development cycle as well. 
Okay. So, um, so say for our community, obviously we've got we've got a whole lot of developers and they've got product, right? They've they've, they've we're not talking about the funding the project. We're talking about yep. the end product here. So. Um, what's the best way for them to be able to utilize? So do they sell it to Bricklet or how does that sort of mechanics work? So they've got, let's say, 10 townhouses. Yeah, good um, question. So how, how the platform works from a developer's point of view that has completed stock is, so they would, um, we would go through a, um, a, a compliance process around understanding a little bit about the background of the developer, make sure that the quality control um, boxes are all ticked. Then after that, basically how it works is that there's a there's a listing agreement and it goes on the platform for a period of time. So for each property, it'll go on for a period of time and there's a countdown. We work out how many bricklets that they um, that is you know probably the most successful for each property, mm. and then we'll list it for that period of time. So it's it's almost like an option over the property. So okay. if we yep. get to the end of the period and it hasn't sold in full, um, then it goes back. It's almost like a an auction, you know, being passed in an auction kind of okay. thing. Okay. Okay, and so what's sort of the general period that you have it? Usually it's, um, I mean, we're looking for somewhere between 30 and 60 days usually. Okay, okay. Yeah. And so what's been the average sort of subscription? Um, the it's been kind of around, yeah, around 30 to 40 days. Okay, all right. So we've got quite a few um, investors already waiting on the platform for product. Yes. Excellent. Excellent, <laughs> which is fantastic because obviously to have eight million dollars worth of bricklets sold in such a short time, yeah, um, that's pretty phenomenal. And and I guess that's the question that um, so for a developer then the benefit there explained there for say for our development um, community, what would be the benefit to have them? What do they sell? I, I know I asked this before, but do they then list it on bricklet? Is that is that the right yeah. term to say? Yeah, correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we so we use a term, um, we say it's in like an initial bricklet offering. So okay. we call that um, like an IBO because it's very similar in process to what an IPO is in, in for, for the stock exchange. So basically how it works is that you've got a period of time that you've got X number of bricklets that need to be sold. And then when they're all sold, then we transact that and then it actually goes live on the platform itself. Okay, so alrighty, I think that that means. Um, and have you found with uh, developers who have various, quite a few in a development, like I said, ten or maybe yep. twenty? Yeah. Is there ever sort of an issue around that, or do you sort of manage that in stages to say, no, we probably don't want ten on the platform at once. Let's. <laughs> Yeah, there's a management process around, I guess, supply and demand. So we want to make sure that, you know, if we don't want to put hundreds of properties on, you know, of one development, if we, you know, we want to make sure that we, we're selling them out. So, um, you know, we'll definitely stage them. And, you know, if we put two on and they sell within two days, we're happy to put more and more on very yeah. quickly. So it all comes down to how well they sell. Um, you know, and we've got some, you know, some really good product coming up. So, you know, we're happy to look at, we're always, you know, trying to source good quality quality product to put on the platform okay so great so um developer comes in or whoever it is that has some sort of product um says hey darren i'd like to be able to list it on your platform is yep. it almost is it almost like i was going to say not realestate.com but is it almost a, a, another sales listing platform to a certain yeah, degree. Yeah, I mean, you could think of it like a sales listing platform, um, but it's done a little bit differently, obviously. So mm. we're not just selling the property, but we're selling it in, you know, with bricklets. So we're, mm. we're going to cut it up into pieces and then sell the pieces. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I'm getting a, glaring a clearer idea. I'm going to have a look at some questions. Okay. Um, Brian says, uh, biggest issue, and I'm sure this comes up quite often, is the secondary market. Yeah. If you need to sell, can you at reasonable price reflective from that asset back backing in short period um, sell the bricklet? So talk to us about that that secondary market. What's yeah, so happening at the moment? Yeah, so the liquidity piece, uh, how we solve that is we allow people to every year the properties will get valued um, with an independent valuation. So we know what the price is for that twelve month period. The two op the two options for a bricklet holder is to one sell it on the market, sell it at market price. 
and people you know, can buy it at that price. The other option is if, if they need an immediate sale, we also have underwriting funds that are, that are there to, uh, to pick up stock um, that needs to be sold straight away at a 15% discount. So at any point, um, the liquidity oh, right. okay. there, if you're happy to take a discount, you can get out straight away. Okay. Um, so I hope that sort of, so there is, there is like I said, a, uh, we've got a solution there. Correct. Um, all right. So let's talk about, you know, I've asked you before um, around the ownership and the, the, the structure as well. Let's step back a bit. Um, so I've been exposed to a lot of um, uh, similar sort of platforms where it's mainly a unit trust and yep. you can buy very small, you know, small yep. you know, units or, or large units. Talk to yep. us about that, that difference there. Yeah. So the main difference, um, I guess, between any of the other um, similar style platforms or fractionalization platforms is that they run it as a unit trust. So um, it just means it's indirect. So it means that you own units in a unit trust. You don't actually own, your property. So with Bricklet, we went to a lot of effort to make sure that anybody that owns a Bricklet is actually on land title. So um, it might not sound like it's a, a significant difference, but it does make a lot of difference to people that want to own property and has a lot of different um, advantages as well. Um, one of the things that obviously um, that people realize straight away about that is that each time that you buy a Bricklet, you also do need to buy, do need to pay your pro rata stamp duty any of the fees that are associated. So, you know, it has a bit of a negative on that sense, but at the same time, you know, you're getting the, you're getting the pure property. Okay. So you've got, um, and the legals in terms of uh, conveyancing, how does that get managed? Yeah. So all the conveyancing um, is managed with the platform. So we have a, a national e-conveyance on the back end, um, which we're automating more and more. So we leverage, um, we leverage a platform called Title Exchange, which is a, um, you know, it's an e-conveyancing kind of platform and we want to, at, at the ultimate goal is to get it to a point where, you know, we can transact and have it settled, you know, within hours, if not days, um, yeah. you know, which has yeah. never been seen before. So, okay. you know, we, I mean, that, that'll take a, a bit of time and a bit of effort, but, you know, we're working in conjunction with that um, entity to make that, that possible. So can you give me an example, if we've got um, a 25,000 and is that, is that sort of the, the smallest quantum of investment yeah i mean twenty five thousand. i mean maybe go down as low as twenty thousand. but mm. the reason for the price point is mainly around the stamp duty so with the um with the pro rata stamp duty when you start to go much lower than that the percentage of the fees starts to increase mm. so if you went down to say ten thousand or five thousand dollars worth of property the amount that you pay in all the fees the, the percentage even though the dollar amount comes down the percentage starts to go up so it doesn't make it as efficient yeah. um and also we've done a you know at the very beginning of the project you know we spent a lot of time uh doing a lot of research with the market we also did that with um with Murvac and stockland as well we did a lot of work with you know trying to understand you know what the market is looking for what what makes sense and that price point as a minimum um, was valuable because it's it's um it's property you know and property yeah. is valuable so having a, having a really small piece and someone described it to me one day about, you know, it's, it's like having gold, you know, if I had a gold bullion, then it feels valuable. But if I give you a tiny little speck of gold, yeah. even though it's worth the same per ounce, it kind of doesn't feel as valuable. Yeah. 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 No, I, I, and we, we're particularly, um, you know, Australia, as you know, it, we're, we're quite property obsessed and we like the idea of that ownership as well. Um, and to have, um, that sense of I've got a part of something. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Is uh, and, and something, I guess, solid. Um, yeah. Yeah. So uh, who else? I mean, globally, um, is anything else like there that's operating now? No, not that we've seen. So we haven't okay. seen anything that is, um, I mean, there's, there's examples of um, what's called tokenization, which is very different. Mm. So, mm. which is, you know, using um, a blockchain protocol to create mm. digital assets that represent real estate. So there's kind of, I guess they can do it, you know, that that's a different way of trying to do it, but I haven't seen one that actually has the name replicated onto land title. Yeah. But it, it seems to a certain extent, like, 
like simple. <laughs> I know it's, <laughs> I, I know yeah. obviously the technology <laughs> doesn't, but you know, everyone's come up with this, um, like I said, the, 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 the crypto, uh, I'm not, I'm not taking it away, but yeah. using blockchain and all that fragment, whatever, you know, and, but people understand this. Yeah, well, I mean, the simple, I guess the simplest way to understand it is, is that it is a piece of property that you're buying. And that's what we, you know, that's really what we would try to solve. And so by putting that, putting that structure around it is, is effectively what we've created so that you can, you know, you can own a piece of the property, still have your name on title, but be able to trade it in a way or purchase it in a way that has never been done before to make it really simple and easy. Yeah. Okay. I mean, to me, it sort of makes it makes sense. I mean, I've got young, I've got young children and if I want to be able to save some money for them and put them into property now, but yeah. it's still affordable to a certain extent, like I can do so, but I'm sure what, what are sort of the, you know, like I said, the, the naysayers, what are they sort of saying? Yeah. I mean, it's something that definitely divides people, you know, it's, it's something that is, um, you know, people just, you know, when they talk about it, it's like, it's like typical change, you know, the way I, the way I, the easiest way to understand it is I use the example of, um, of Uber, mm. you know, with Uber, if I ask um, people, you know, have you caught an Uber recently? And most people say, yeah, I've caught an Uber. Um, but if you ask them how many people caught the very first Uber, you know, were they happy to jump in a stranger's car when Uber was first mm. around? And the answer is mm. usually no. Mm. Um, and you can look at it, many, many platforms like that, you know, Airbnb was the same. You know, most people now use Airbnb for at least one holiday a year. They'll use an Airbnb mm -hmm. where, you know, were they happy to do the first Airbnb and live in some stranger's house, you know, and borrow it just for, for a week? Um, you know, most people were a bit sceptical until it kind of got some traction. So yeah. it's, I think it's more about people just understanding it and getting used to that, you know, new way of, of property um, in the same way that people, you know, they take time and they, you know, those that are skeptical, that's fine, you know, just sit back and watch what happens. And, mm. you know, this will be something that, that changes the way that property is traded. Yeah, absolutely. So what's been sort of the, the, the largest hurdle that you've had um, since launching? I mean, you've only launched officially since January. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think um, I think the reality really comes into how I think it's more the opposite. It's more the um, getting people to understand it. I think is is one thing, but the what's been amazing with with this so far is that the amount of traction that we've got, and, and there's a lot of excited people. But you know, there's obviously a lot of skeptics that that you know want to sit back and see what happens. But at the mm -hmm. same time, there's a lot of people that are embracing it and saying, mm -hmm. "Wow, this is amazing." I mean the you know, the developers that, that just completed the first development project on, on Bricklet, you know, they're absolutely over the moon. I mean, yeah, okay. you know, totally changing the way they do things. So it's just, um, you know, more about just getting people used to it uh, yeah. more than anything, you know, and it's more, okay, who is Bricklet? Of course, everybody's going to be a little bit worried. It's a new platform. And I just keep coming back to those examples of, you know, being those, early adopters versus mm. someone who's going to sit around and kind of wait for to see what happens next yeah so are, are there so it's for the investors out there that are that are interested and feel free to ask questions i'm sure a lot of people are just going well mind blown i'm sure you get this <laughs> that reaction <laughs> a lot um yeah. and you know people are asking about the secondary market they'll talk about the valuations you know yeah. and and how they can extract you know whether they can leverage the equity from, did we ask, did we talk about ex accessing equity? Now we talked about leveraging if we were able to, yeah. um, you know, use a deposit and all that. So how is it that uh, ability to, to access equity? Yeah, I mean, there will be in the future. I think uh, there's a little bit, of, little bit more work to be done around what, um, what has to be done for existing properties especially existing properties that people want to release some equity over time. Mm. It's definitely possible and something that's on our, you know, on our to-do list at some stage to look at that scenario because it's, mm. you know, it is very valuable. At the moment, it's not available. We've taken the, um, the path of going, you know, the new property is much easier um, to, to put a whole, you know, put the process around. So we're focused on that at the moment. However, you know, we will be looking at that ability to you know to release equity over time from a property okay all right cool so uh obviously just with any new technology there's going to be added stuff going on 
in the background. I'm sure yeah. that that will be tacking on uh, along the way. Um, let me see if there are a few comments here. Um, let's see, hi Corn, hi Mick, hi Felix. I like to say hello to everyone, um, and a few few other people here. Um, uh, we mentioned very, very briefly, and this is just a little bit of a, you know, uh, uh, a light touch on the development, property development side of things. And I won't go into too much detail because I like us to have some time to go through do and part two. But you, you were actually talking about a new way of funding developments as well. Um, and that's a whole development site. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, okay. so that that's, I think that's something that we'll go into a lot more deep yeah, dive into the, uh, uh, you know, into the next session. But basically yeah. what it means is, you know, I mean, a typical, um, just to give a really high level, I guess, snapshot mm. is that, you know, development is typically kind of, you know, you'll pay for the land, you'll finance then to do construction and then, mm. you know, the, the price is paid and everything's settled and you make the remaining as, as profit. So that's the traditional model. With Bricklet, you actually raise the, the price, you raise the money for the land, and you raise the money for the construction mm -hmm. and take some equity in bricklets in the in the yeah. project, and then everybody shares in the upside. So it yeah. starts to make a very very interesting yes uh, project. So yeah, we'll definitely talk about that next. Yeah, week. I think I think <laughs> it will be um that's that's something that's going to take a, a whole session on its own because and probably if you've got some slides there because yeah. it's a whole whole different. Uh, the funding space in, in development, as as you know, is is very very topical. Um, you know, there's a lot of private lending out there. Uh, admittedly, private lending is getting more expensive as well, um, yeah. and and banks aren't you know lending as much as for, as they used to. So I really like us to explore how that looks like and um, and the benefits and you know probably the savings that you're getting as a developer from it but you're not you know like i said we're, we're looking at a whole different model there similarly as we are as, as investors looking at it from a different model um yeah, absolutely. So the, the one thing that sort of popped out of my mind is um are there are there actually cost savings for investors using bricklet uh well i guess the cost saving really comes into from the investor point of view that buy bricklets there's not much difference between what they would buy with a bricklet to what they would buy with a full property. It's okay. very, very similar in, in price. There's no real cost saving, yeah. um, but there's also no extra expense as well. So we've, we've done our best to make sure that there's no cost to the, to the bricklet purchaser other than, you know, the regulatory costs of stamp duty and, and those kind of typical purchase fees. Okay. So, so for a 25,000 purchase, what can we sort of expect there in terms of stamp duty, legals, um, yeah, it, it works out to be roughly around kind of 5% okay. um, in total. So it's kind of, it's very similar to, you know, if you look at a full property and see what you pay, yeah. um, again, similar percentage. So it's fairly, fairly nominal there. And are people expected to also have their, I mean, you know, get their, their, their lawyers to look through any of the legals or? Uh, oh, absolutely they can. Yeah. I mean, the way that the platform works is that um, it's also, it's structured as a financial product at, at the, um, the way that we uh, lock the, lock the bricklet into the land title. So there's a, um, there's a document, um, there's two documents. One is the, the master document, which is the master IM, which is available um, at any point on the platform as well after you sign up. And also there's a document for, that goes with each property. And that um, that I am that goes with each property has got a full detail around you know who the developer is, what what you're paying for, what the suburb is, all the detail, and a lot of the legal all the legal details are in there as well. So okay. if anybody wants to take that to their lawyer, they can obviously get that reviewed and and. Um, okay, so it's an it's an information memorandum, so it's under a financial services license. Correct. Correct. Okay. Perfect. Excellent. So um, I'm sure we could ask, I mean, I know I'd, I could definitely ask a whole lot of questions. Um, uh, what I want to be able to do, I said, um, I understand there are lots of people out there that want to know, have more questions. Anyone that's in Brisbane, uh, I know that you've got an information session sometime this week. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we've got um, this Thursday, this Thursday okay. night, if, um, yeah. if there's any Brisbane people on there at the moment um, and they want to uh, maybe could share the link um, out after yeah. this. Or, yeah, I'll do um, 
there's a um, there's an event. It's um, I was going to say in Silicon Valley, but it's in Fortitude Valley. <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, it's like Silicon Valley. Uh, it's on. So anyone, a look. It's in yeah. the evening, so you've got to register. It is free, 5 to 7 p.m. Thursday, 5th of March um, uh, in Wickham Street. So yeah. right after that, you can go for a party. Um, <laughs> a Vestix Lab, is that a, is that a, a startup? Um, yeah, they're kind of an innovation company. Um, okay. You know, they've got a very nice space there, and they're, they're partnered with us to put on the – put on the event so it'll be a, a really good event okay fantastic all right i've got the the link here and i'll add that on to uh one second i'll add that on to the comments a little later on um but yeah but i won't get too excited about talking about the funding side of things because i'm holding myself back um <laughs> but we're this is this is going to be part two i'm pretty sure we've got you locked in for next week uh, two weeks time two weeks two weeks time um, to talk about how we can fund development projects um, through Bricklet. So if you've got questions, um, hold them till next two weeks from now, if you can. Uh, and you've got any particular questions for Darren and uh, we've got quite a lot of people that watch this throughout the week as well. So I'm sure they have comments um, to add to it. So I'd like to thank you, Darren. If you've got, do you have any particular questions yourself? I should have um, no, I think, you know, I'd love to hear any of the questions, you know, from, from the audience and, and, you know, especially from the developers around, you know, what they see and, you know, what potential properties we could bring onto the platform as well. Yeah. So if there are any developers that, that are keen to, you know, list on Bricklet, yeah. I hope I'm doing the, the, the right way. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Uh, and I know there's a, there's a bit of stock sort of flying around in some places um, and people like to have pre-sales and things like that. Um, uh, get in contact with you to see if there's yeah. an option to be able to sell because it's a different, it's it's a bit different. Particularly, are you finding that higher value properties or there's a specific sweet spot? There's no, there's no real sweet spot. I think, you know, it just comes down to, I think the, the main thing that, I think makes a, makes it successful or not successful for each of the properties is um, does it make sense from an investor's point of view? So is it a good investment proposition? It doesn't necessarily have to have the high yield if it's got good capital growth. Doesn't necessarily have to have the good capital growth if it's got the high yield. So just think of the same metrics that people would use to you know to look at for an investment property in full. Yeah, yeah. they'd use the similar metrics for for Bricklet. Okay, excellent. Well, if they've got any questions, um, I've put a link to your website and I'm sure there's a contact. Is there a contact us email yeah. that yeah. you've got there? Excellent. Um, no more questions for me because I don't want to burst the bubble for the next the next session. Thank you so much. Um, Julian says, very interesting. Um, uh, Julian's from Brisbane, but he's actually in Sydney at the moment. So it's a shame you can't make the inf information session. But I appreciate your time, Darren. Um, it's been, I said, I'm very excited about, about this platform. Definitely, we're looking at it um, from an investment point of view, personally, uh, as well as, as our projects as well. Um, so uh, definitely, if anyone out there, look into what these guys are doing. It really is um, a game changer, and particularly with young people as well, um, you know, self-managed supers. So, Thank you for your time. I'll be seeing you in two weeks and I'll pop that link onto the comment section as well. So thanks everyone for tuning in. Um, uh, Darren, I'll be sending you an invitation. Look out for the event. We'll be popping that up on, on the Facebook page um, and we'll be catching up with you pretty soon. Great. Thanks a lot. Thanks no, a lot for thanks, your time. Thanks, Darren. Ciao. Bye. Yeah, bye.